Hello, it's Eitan Shalom, and I am back with my patient with the IT band pain, and I'm doing electrical stimulation on the trigger points, and I'm going to show you what I did as I take these needles out, actually. So I did the motor point of the piriformis and the quadratus lumborum because she her hip feels very tight and i'm just going to stimulate these a bit as i take them out you okay mm. there we go that was the motor point releasing stimulating which causes the muscle to lay reason why i'm doing that is because the piriformis and quadratus femoris originate on the greater trochanter here they're what are called lateral uh, hip rotators and then they let me back up a little bit and then they wrap around and insert onto the sacrum so they're primary uh, lateral hip rotators. And when they're tight, you feel tightness in the hip. Those are some of the muscles involved. And then this is the quadratus femoris. I'm just going to stimulate it a little bit. So I find that, that after the person's relaxed, relaxed a while, I'm able to get a little bit more uh, release on trigger points. And here, on the other hand, we have electrical stimulation. I don't know if you can see the muscle moving. There we go. Now you can see it. So those are trigger points on the IT band. And so you start here and attach it there. And then that passes electricity through the whole muscle. And muscles work by electricity. Our own body makes electricity. And that's how muscles work. They shorten. They work by shortening, and they shorten because of electrical changes and electrical potential in the muscle tissues. So when you run the electrical current uh, into the needle, it's actually forcing the muscle to tighten and then relax, tighten and relax, and that causes the muscle to, to lengthen, and it also helps to deactivate the trigger points. I don't always use it. I use it in very strong athletic types when the muscles are really tight um, and so you can see the muscle moving it doesn't hurt it feels like kind of like a tapping sensation and how did it feel to you Marshall the electrical stimulation it felt good it actually got more intense as they were, my muscle relaxed uh-huh okay and then it kind of leveled out good excellent okay so I'm disconnecting these and because her needle stimulation was already quite sufficiently strong, I'm not going to stimulate these much as I take them out, though I could. So that's always a judgment call, obviously, on what the person can tolerate, what's necessary, obviously, as well. And in her case, she's very experienced with this, and she has such a... What did you say earlier that uh, every time I've seen you... Uh, before you were saying that every time I've seen you that you whatever you came in with felt better right away afterwards yeah I mean I feel like I react very strongly to yeah. the yeah so because she relax re reacts so well I mean she's not like I have a patient who's uh, like a really super buffed navy seal you know and I have to needle the hell out of him and he it does he doesn't even feel anything I'm not saying he doesn't feel anything, but he doesn't um, stress out. But Marcel is is much more sensitive, and I don't need to stimulate it as aggressively as I would with him, or as I would with myself when I needle myself as well. Um, so uh, you don't, I don't always have to. Um, there we go. That one I felt like I had to get because it was so tight. And this is the. This is, this is the worst part of her pain is down here because this is where the um, IT band attaches. That's where the, yeah, that was a good one. I could feel that really release. Um, and so I'm going to leave that in for a second. I'm just, and then this was the, the uh, peroneus, uh, trigger point in the peroneus. So let me get these wires out of the way. I'm going to stimulate this peroneus a little bit. You okay? Not too much? Strong. Ooh, okay. That's a lot. Okay. There we go. And I also so um, after the camera ran out of uh, uh, ran out before, I had gotten um, 
I think it was this Peronius point in, or maybe it was, it was actually one of these points up here. And uh, Marcel said that she felt it radiate all the way down into her foot. And I was starting to explain when the camera ran out that, this is me, you can see me now. I was starting to explain that uh, trigger points have referral patterns, predictable referral patterns that have been documented by Janet Travell and others. So they're, you know, they're books that you can look at the images uh, and know where a, what a predictable pattern is. And the, and the patterns, though they're predictable, there's multiple possibilities and also every human's unique. But she felt it radiating all the way down into her foot here. And this is why I always believe in treating the whole person. Um, we're all stressed out, quarantined due to coronavirus. And this happens to be where she said that she felt it referred down to here. This is a fabulous acupuncture point in classical Chinese channel theory. And this is a point to release the stagnant qi in the gallbladder channel. And the gallbladder channel, guess where it goes? All the way through where her pain is on the IT band, all the way up to the head. So this is a fabulous migraine point, by the way. And so on the basic theory of I want to open up the flow of chi, that's treating the root of the problem is because on objectively speaking, um, tightness and pain is chi stagnation in the language of Chinese medicine. I want to open up the flow of chi through the I want to up, open up the flow of chi through the area where she's having her pain. And if she's telling me that it refers down to a very powerful acupuncture joint point that's that's the equivalent of turning, um, you know, on a water heater where there's a faucet at the bottom, turning that on to drain the water out of the water heater. That's what that point's doing in combination with its paired point, this one. So this is a Chinese acupuncture thing. And that's, those are the master and couple point for the Dai Mo or the belt channel, not really that important, but that's a fabulous point for relaxing the fascia I believe that these acupuncture points like that influence the fascia because the fascia flows through the whole body the same way the acupuncture channels do. Okay, so now I'm going to take this last needle out that I left in a little bit more. Stimulate it one more time, Marcel. So this is proper dry needling here, stimulating this up and down. And, you know, this needle is in a solid half inch and as I'm lifting and thrusting it goes in Ooh. even a little further. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to massage her with some magnesium topical spray. This is not product placement. This is just letting you know what I do. And that's going to lubricate the muscle there and, and uh, have a muscle relaxing effect. And then I'm going to use some Chinese herbal spray because then I'm going to, that's, uh, you know, like got just like Tiger Bomb, but much stronger. It has a counter irritant effect because then I'm going to do some sliding cups on her to help uh, add to what we're doing. And you, one could even do scraping here um, or the uh, some of the chiros use something called grafton, a grafson uh, uh, method, which is uh, a kind of deep tissue massage with a metal device. Um, so I'm going to turn this off now. Um, I'm going to do apply that liniment. Uh, actually, why should I turn it off? I'm going to leave it on right here. And not that this will be terribly interesting, but it might be. So I'm going to put the spray, which is, which stuff. is, yeah. What did you say? I love that stuff. I love yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned about this spray, this, this from one of my patients, because I'm a strong advocate for the use of magnesium in people that need it. Uh, people with chronic tight muscles, people that have trouble sleeping, people with anxiety, garden variety, low-level anxiety, and people with constipation. But it's, so if you have all of those or any of those, and uh, I, oh, I recommend magnesium citrate taken at night before bed to help relax your muscles. Uh, the only reason not to use it is if you have a problem with your gut where you get diarrhea easily. So that's the magnesium. And now comes my... Chinese spray. This is an excellent spray. It's Golden Sunshine brand herbal spray. They're not paying me anything to say that. Of course, I don't have 100,000 likes either. Not yet, anyway. So, I'm just going to do, in, in Chinese medical massage, this is called chafing. Except it's not really chafing because the magnesium creates a lubricating effect. And I'm going to put a little bit of 
uh, uh, lotion to make it even more slippery for me when I do the sliding cups. And which the uh, camera is going to turn off by itself, so we'll get interrupted abruptly at some point. Don't hold it against me. I didn't promise anybody high production values. <laughs> this is about this is about information, not a fancy pants video. Uh, all right, so you can see this cup slides. Uh, I'm using the Korean style modern suction cups. So stop me. Is that about right? Yeah. Not too much. So sliding cups. I, I didn't, I'm not making it as strong as a, as if I were going to just leave it there. I'm going to try to do. It's too tight. No, I'm going to no. try some sliding cups on her. She may not like it. So if she doesn't, we won't do it. No, if she doesn't. I'll, I'll force her. How's that? Is that okay? Yeah. So what this is doing, this is kind of like the, you okay? Take a nice deep breath. This is kind of like the massage technique where they pull the skin away from the body. It's breaking up, breaking up. What is cupping doing? It's breaking up adhesions in the fascia. And there's no better area to do that than over the, over the IT band because your IT band is tight. And I'm going to do... So that's sliding along the oh, okay. direction <laughs> of the fascia. You okay? Yeah, it's intense. And now here, I'm going to go across perpendicular to the way the fibers go. This is kind of like a cross fiber massage technique. It's a little bit stronger, although in some ways it's more comfortable. How do you yeah, like how? This feels good, right? Yeah. I love how this feels. It's intense, but it, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to describe yeah, to people that haven't had it. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. oh, I lost my suction there. So you have to keep... Why do I like this version of, of cupping? Because if I was using the traditional fire cups and I would lose suction, I'd have to keep doing it again and again with fire. The effect of the cup isn't the fire, it's the suction. So it really doesn't matter whether you create the suction with fire or a hand vacuum. I would say that the traditional fire cups, they feel nicer because they're glass. The lip is thicker, and glass just feels nicer than plastic, but it's not a significant enough difference. And this is just enables you to do so much more. You okay? Yeah. And also not to risk the possibility of burning anybody, which is not, not irrelevant, and also having to breathe the fumes of the burning cotton ball. Yeah, because isn't it like alcohol? Yeah, you dip a cotton ball in alcohol and light it, and now you're breathing the fumes. Imagine doing that for a 40-year career. Why should you destroy your lungs? It doesn't make sense. You okay? Yeah. I'm going to see if this one tolerates it a little bit stronger. And then when I'm done with the sliding cup, that's too strong, right? Yeah. When I'm done with the sliding cups, I am going to still do some stationary cups, because then I can make the suction a little stronger.